Hi there, my name is Chris Amerikos, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how to start a conversation in English. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, and in this video, I'm going to show you examples, and I'm even going to show you how you can practice using these ways of starting conversations with native speakers and other people who are learning English around the world. So let's jump right into this video. Come on. Sometimes when we want to start a conversation with a person who we don't know, or maybe a group of people who we don't know, we want to say something that's going to make everyone feel less stressed, right? That will make them feel more comfortable. And we call this breaking the ice. So there are some special phrases that we might use in English that help us break the ice. And these special phrases are called ice breakers. And let's look at a few icebreakers right now. An icebreaker might be something like, hey, how's it going? Or what's up? But let's look at all of these different ways to start a conversation in English in different categories, right? There's different situations and some situations call for different icebreakers or different phrases. Now, other than icebreakers, there are some general conversation starters that we can use just to get things going, to get everything moving forward, right? Because sometimes you see a person and you don't know what to talk to them about. You don't know what they will be comfortable with. So there are some standard conversation starters that I'm gonna show you right now. It's usually a good idea to begin a conversation with the basics, like what's your name or where are you from? Or you could initiate a conversation by introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Chris Americos. What's your name? Or I'm Chris from the United States. Where are you from? Or you could open up a conversation by talking about something that's happening at the time or in the place where the meeting is taking place. So uh, maybe the music is really loud and I can say, the music is too loud in here. Hi, I'm Chris, what's your name? Right, so we're using this situation to start the conversation. Or who are our mutual acquaintances, right? Those are people who we both know. We call them mutual acquaintances. Or you could kick off a conversation by giving the person a compliment. That's a great jacket. Where did you get it? I'm Chris, by the way. Or, your English is great. Hi, I'm Chris, what's your name? Or you could begin a conversation by asking a question like, what do you do for a living? Right, this means, what is your job? How do you make money? We say, what do you do for a living? Or we could ask, where are you from originally? We ask this question when we know that the person is not from here. So maybe you know that the person is not from your country and they speak your language very well and maybe you can say, where are you from originally? Like, I understand that you probably live here, but you came from a different place before. All right, so we've talked about a lot of different phrases, but let's back up, back up. <laughs> and let's talk about greeting words. These are words that we can use to get conversations started too. And sometimes we don't have to use a whole phrase. We can just use one word and it's a greeting, right? Every language has this and many people start conversations just like this. Some of these words are, hey, hi, yo. <laughs> that one's really informal or sup. That's a short form of the question, what's up? Which is just a greeting. Or we might say, howdy. It's very American. Or, hello. That's more formal. Or, g'day. That's more Australian. All right, some of those greetings are more formal than others. And that's why it's really important to understand the difference between formal greetings and informal greetings. In most situations with people, you're going to use informal greetings because probably you're practicing your English in an informal situation. However, if you find yourself in a formal situation, you should use formal ways to start conversations. But right now, let's look at the informal ways that we can get things rolling. When we're speaking informally, we can say things like, how's it going? Or what's going on? What's up? And also we can use some slang phrases like, what's poppin'? Or what's crackin'? 
or maybe what's new or what's good. Also, there's more typical informal greetings like how are you doing and how are things. So one of the problems that a lot of my students have and the students who have studied with me around the world, I mean thousands of students who have joined my lessons, they've told me that they have trouble starting conversations with people who they don't know at all. And it's not really about starting the conversation, it's about continuing the conversation and you know making it move forward and making it longer. Because if you just say a few words, you're not really making a connection with this person. So there are a few things that we can do to continue the conversation. First of all, we could add details, we could ask questions, and we could ask for opinions. And this will lead us to more of a discussion, which will be really good for keeping the conversation going. When you're speaking with people who you don't know, impersonal questions are the best way to initiate a conversation. You know, we can connect our questions to events that are happening around us. Like, do you mind if I sit here? Right, maybe you see that there's an open chair or an open seat next to the person, and you can ask, do you mind if I sit here? This is a good way to, first of all, make sure that the person will not be uncomfortable when you sit there, but also it's a good way to initiate a conversation. We might say, I really like your shoes. Where did you get them? Or maybe a more useful question, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Or maybe, could you tell me when this shop closes? After we start by asking some questions, we can also add details to make the conversation keep going. This means that we need to add details about the topic that we're already speaking about, and maybe we want to speak about different parts or aspects of that topic. So maybe we're talking about watching a film, and we can say, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? We might say, the reason I'm asking is because I've been thinking about watching that film, and I just wanted to know if it's good or not. And hopefully this person will tell us their opinion, right? And we'll get more details. We might be talking about going to a restaurant and we can say, that restaurant that you're talking about, is it near here? I've been looking for a good Thai restaurant around here, so thanks for recommending that. So if the person adds more details, we can thank them for these details. We can say, thanks for your suggestion. Or we could say, I appreciate you telling me about that. If you want to have a long conversation, then you'll probably want to get to know the person you're speaking with better. This means you learn more about them. When we learn more about someone or something, we can say that we get to know it or get to know it better. To keep the conversation going, you'll want to ask some general questions and try to find topics of common interest. For example, do you come to these places a lot? Right? Maybe we meet a person in a cafe and we say, do you come to cafes a lot? It's a good way to start. Or maybe, what made you come here today? Or what are you doing here today? Do you always come here on Wednesdays, for example? We might ask them about their job and say, what line of work are you in? A line of work, it just means an industry or a type of work. And we might also just ask about uh, if they're local. We might say, are you from around here? Now, when we've found a conversation topic that both people are comfortable speaking about, we can take the conversation deeper by switching topics. So maybe they tell us some information and then instead of them telling all the details, now we share information too and we share our details about us. So we might say, you have a brother? What a coincidence, I have a brother too. Or, I love dogs. How many dogs do you have? Or, no way, I used to live in Boston too. Another way to engage someone in a deep conversation is by asking for their opinion. Everyone's got an opinion and most people like sharing theirs. So here's how you can do that. You can say, have you had any luck with this website? Like, for example, let's say that you join my English Everyday program where you can practice speaking 24-7 and it's really cheap, and you want to talk to another person there who has been studying for two or three months with us, right? You can say, have you had any luck with this website? It means, what's your experience with this website? Another question we might ask is, do you think it's okay that I'm getting a call from this number? Right? In this situation, probably the person is with us and we show them the number and they say, yes, it's okay to answer that or no. And maybe we don't know and we want to ask the other person's opinion. We can say, hmm, I'm not sure. What do you think about this? That's another good way to 
ask for their opinion. In the beginning of a conversation, it's really interesting to talk to a new person, but after some time, that feeling goes away. So that's when you'll want to mention something that's closely connected to the topic that you've already been discussing. So you might do it like this. You might say, speaking of great films, have you seen this film? And then you can recommend your film. You can say what you like. Or we might say, oh, that's right. You know what else happened that day? And we might give more information, right? Maybe they added some information and now we want to show them that uh, something else is connected to this topic that they were speaking about. Or my favorite one is, oh, that reminds me. You can just say this phrase right before you say something that's connected to the topic. They might say, I was taking my dog for a walk yesterday and my dog chased the mailman. And I might say, oh, that reminds me. I didn't get mail from the mailman for the last five days. And so you see, it's not really about the dog anymore. Now it's about my situation. And I just used this phrase to change directions. And I can just say, oh, that reminds me and then say what I wanted to say, right? Now, when you've been speaking with someone for a while, it's a polite gesture to check and make sure that they want to continue. You don't wanna just keep talking and talking and talking and maybe they're not interested, right? So it's a good idea to get confirmation from them and be sure that they're not just being polite by listening to you. Here's what I like to say. I like to tell them, let me know if you need to go. I don't wanna keep you from anything. Now, this is quite polite if we say it once and the person just says, oh, no, 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 you're not keeping me, go on. Or I might say, I haven't caught you at a bad time, have I? Is it okay for you to talk? Or maybe you're probably in the middle of something right now. Do you have time to chat? So we're just checking that we're not wasting their time, that they're actually interested. One of the most important parts of having a good conversation with someone is knowing when to shut up and stop talking. The best way to transition out of a conversation is by talking about future plans. You might do this by saying, hey, feel free to get in touch with me if you're ever in town again, right? This way you're opening up to the next step, the next step of the relationship and the next time that you're going to have communication with this person. You might say, I've really enjoyed our chat today. Thank you so much. Or you might say, if you wanna chat again, I'm usually in this cafe on Fridays. Right? So instead of contacting each other, we'll just show up. Or we might just say that it was nice to meet them. And we might say something to tell them that the conversation is finished, right? Like, it was great meeting you today. I'll see you next time. Or I'll see you around. When we say I'll see you around, it means I will see you somewhere, sometime. We're not going to plan it, but I'm sure that I will see you again. Now, one type of conversation starter that we have to really be careful with is imperatives. These are commands. It's when we tell somebody to do something. And in some languages, this doesn't sound very rude, or maybe it's just the way that people speak. But in English, when we use commands and when we use the imperative form of the verb, it can sound rude because we're using direct language instead of indirect language. Let me give you some examples. Now, if you don't know what imperatives are, imperatives are commands. They're the form of the verb that we should use when we give orders or we give instructions. In many situations, they sound very direct. They can sound forceful and even rude. And that's why we have to be careful when we're using them. But here are a few that we might use to get the conversation started. We might say, talk about something. Now, I personally don't like it when someone says this to me because uh, I wasn't planning to speak about something, right? If I had something to speak about, I would tell you. But I've heard other people say this to me many times. Another thing that people might say is, tell me something interesting, or tell me your story, or tell me about yourself. So when we do this, when we use an imperative and we command another person to start speaking, it can feel a little uncomfortable for them because it's so direct. All right, next, let's talk a little bit about what you can say to start a conversation with your colleagues or your coworkers. Hi, Mike, how's it going? How are you doing? I'm having a really slow day today. How about you? When we say that we're having a slow day, it means that we don't have a lot of work or we're not completing a lot of tasks. Another important situation to understand is when you start a conversation with a person that you haven't seen for a long time. 
It's been a very long time and maybe you haven't spoken in quite a while and now you want to initiate the conversation. So how do you do that? Hey Mike, how have you been? What have you been up to lately? We haven't spoken in ages. Are you still working at Dunkin Donuts? Long time no see. This is probably one of my favorites and I use it a lot when I meet someone who I haven't seen in a while. I say, long time no see. It means I haven't seen you in a long time. Or we might ask, where have you been? Another situation that a lot of my students have asked me about is starting a conversation with a foreigner. And usually that means it's an English speaking person who is visiting their country. But sometimes it's about visiting another country and starting a conversation with someone there. Here are some tips when you're speaking with a foreigner. You should be honest. Don't just say things to agree with them or because you think that they're going to like hearing it. You should imagine what your own reaction would be if someone asked you the same question because sometimes when we speak with foreigners we feel like we're speaking with a different species, a different type of person. But really, they're the same as us, so we should think about how we might feel if someone asked us that question, right? If you don't know how to answer that question yourself, then you probably shouldn't ask someone else. You should avoid yes or no questions. Instead of asking something like, do you like pizza? You can ask, what kind of food do you like? And now they need to explain this to you. Most importantly, you should be friendly. People like meeting other friendly people, even if they aren't friendly themselves. It's funny, but true. And being friendly helps everyone relax and feel comfortable. One thing that I've seen a lot of is more and more conversations talk about technology. And there are a lot of discussions about technology because today we use a lot of technological things in our lives. So how do you start a conversation about technology topics? Which devices do you use every day without exception? What was the best invention to come about in the last decade? Does technology improve our lives or complicate them? That's a very philosophical question, right? Will technology become more intelligent than humans? Which new technology are you most excited about right now? Okay, one of my favorite situations is like the TV show Friends. If you've never seen it, it's about a group of people who are friends and they meet at a cafe and they talk about all kinds of different things that are happening in their lives. And a lot of my students have asked me, how do I start a conversation in a cafe or a restaurant or a bar? So let's look at a few ways that we can do that. I really need a coffee. How was your day? Do you know if the buffalo sandwich is good here? What's your favorite thing to order here? I'm not sure what to order to drink. What would you recommend? Enjoy your pasta, have a good meal. Another big topic that you should know about is starting a conversation about traveling. When you're traveling to another place, a lot of people want to talk to you and ask you about your experience with traveling and maybe they're just interested in knowing about your journey. So how can we start a conversation about traveling and continue it? Do you prefer traveling alone or in a group? Do you usually use a tour agent or book things yourself? What's the longest flight you've ever been on? Where do you plan to travel to next? Is there a place you recommend visiting? What's your favorite aspect of traveling? What? What? I can't hear you, what? How do you start a conversation at a concert with live music when it's super loud and you can't hear anything? <laughs> Here's some examples. There are a lot of people here. Have you ever been here before? What's your favorite song by this group? How often do you go to live shows? Do you play music or just listen? Do you sing? Okay, a lot of people have conversations on the phone. So how do you start conversations about using the phone or on the phone? There's a lot of situations when we need to know this, but unfortunately a lot of people don't know these phrases. So let's look at them now. How often do you check your phone? What do you think phones will be like 10 years from now? How often do you buy a new phone? How does it make you feel when you're away from your phone for a long time? What do you wish that your phone could do that it doesn't do now? I don't know about you, but I love listening to music. And sometimes I want to start a conversation with someone about music. Here's how I do that. What's your favorite song? Who's your favorite singer? Do you like classical music? How do you find new songs and new music? Is there a specific song that you always listen to when you're sad? What's your favorite genre of music? 
Okay, imagine the next situation. You're traveling to a foreign country and you're sitting at the airport waiting to take off, or maybe you're coming back from a vacation and someone looks interesting or someone starts a conversation with you or someone uh, seems like a person who you might be friends with and you start a conversation. You want to strike up a nice little chat. How do you do that at the airport? Where are you flying today? Can you recommend any good restaurants in this airport? Are you flying home or somewhere else? Are you traveling for business or pleasure? This is a question that people ask a lot. Uh, pleasure means that you're on vacation, you're enjoying yourself, and business means that it's a business trip. There's a business reason for your travel. Is there anywhere to charge a phone nearby? Do you know what time will board the plane? Now, sometimes when you're at a shop looking for new clothes, Someone else might also be looking at the same things, and maybe they're wearing something very stylish, and you want to start a conversation with them and see where it goes. Here's how you can do that. What's the most embarrassing piece of clothing you own? How do you think clothes change the way that people perceive us? Do you think it's important to dress up when you go out in public? What's the most expensive piece of clothing you've ever bought? You know, maybe the only other thing that I like as much as music is food. <laughs> and food is a topic that many people all over the world discuss and like discussing. And they like eating it too. That's what I do. But uh, if you need to start a conversation about food or about eating food or about restaurants, here's some examples. Do you like eating at buffets? <laughs> That's right, we pronounce this word buffet in English. And in different places, it has a different meaning, but in English, it's usually a place where you pay one price to go in the door, and then you can eat all the food that you want. What food do you hate? What's your favorite dish? What food are you trying to cut down on? What would the last meal of your life be, and who would you share it with? Wow, that's a big question, right? Do you enjoy going grocery shopping? Grocery shopping is when we go to the grocery store or the supermarket and we buy food. Sometimes we call it food shopping and sometimes we call it grocery shopping. Do you think the government regulates food enough? Okay, I don't know if this situation is about you, but for me, a lot of people want to speak to me about education and about learning, especially learning English. And there are some special phrases that we can use to start a conversation about education. Is it better to go to a private school or a public school? Are standardized tests accurate? Is offline education more effective than online education? That's a big question too. Is teaching a skill that can be taught or is it a natural ability? What do you think about homeschooling? How has education changed your life? Do you think that your country has a good education system? All right, another really important situation is birthday parties. When you go to a birthday party, usually you meet people who are acquaintances or friends of the birthday boy or girl. And you need to be able to start a conversation and speak about some topics that you might have in common. Here's how I like to do that. How do you know the birthday boy? When is your birthday? Did you try the birthday cake? It's so rich. When we're talking about food, especially about chocolate, the word rich means that it has a very strong taste. Usually it's a bitter taste. Sometimes people use this about sweet tastes also. All right, the next situation that I'm going to describe to you, you're probably familiar with because if you've seen any of my videos on any of my channels or websites, then you know that something that's really near and dear to my heart is goals and goal setting. I love talking about goals, I love thinking about goals, and I love planning them and then executing them. So really what you need to be able to do is start a conversation with someone about their goals, and this usually leads to a very interesting discussion, in my opinion. So here's how I like to start that. Do you have a list of goals that you're working on right now? What do you want to accomplish in the next two years? How have your goals changed in the last year? What do you hope to have achieved by the time you retire? Do you usually achieve the goals that you set? 
What are some goals that you've already achieved? Okay, maybe you are a business person and you go to conferences or work meetings and you need to be able to discuss topics there. So it's really important that you can start a conversation and you can reach the result that you're trying to reach for your business purposes, right? You're there for a reason. So how can we be very direct but very polite at the same time? Here's some ways that I like to strike up work conversations. In a more professional setting, we might say something like, we haven't been introduced yet, I'm Chris. Or if we're at a conference, we might say, hey, what did you think of the second speaker? I thought he was great. Or we might say, I really enjoyed that workshop. What did you think? One of the best times of the year is when we have holidays. And there are special ways that we might start a conversation about holidays, even if we don't know very much about a holiday and it's not a holiday that we ourselves celebrate. So it's a cultural topic that we should know how to speak about. What's the biggest holiday that you celebrate? Do you wish there were more holidays or fewer holidays? If you could get rid of one holiday, which holiday would that be? What types of food are traditionally served during big holidays? If you could create a new holiday, what would it be in honor of? What would you celebrate? Another very cultural topic to speak about is books. You can start a conversation about your favorite books or about different genres of books, and you can understand if the person who you're speaking with is interested in that or not. So here's how I like to talk about books. What was the last book you read? Do you prefer physical books? Do you prefer physical books or eBooks? What's the longest book you've ever read? What's your favorite book? What was the last book you read? Do you prefer physical books or eBooks? What's the longest book you've ever read? What's your favorite book? Which genres of books do you enjoy reading? Do you go to the library? Which books have influenced you the most? Okay, the next topic, maybe you don't speak about so much in your language, but English speakers love to talk about it. We love to talk about the weather and seasons. We might say, wow, this is such a hot summer. And we might say, oh, it's such a cold winter. And there are different ways that we might start a conversation using these very simple topics. In fact, these topics can be used to start a bigger conversation. They're very light, and they're something that we might call small talk. Unimportant things just to get the conversation started. What's your favorite season? What do you like doing in the spring? Do you prefer summer or winter sports? Is there a certain period of the year when you usually take your holidays? Do you usually take vacations during a certain period of the year? What's the most refreshing thing for you to do on a summer? What's the most refreshing thing for you to do on a hot summer day? Is it better to live in a place where there are four seasons or where one season takes up most of the year? And now I want to show you just a few more questions that you might be able to use to start a conversation. Are you working on anything interesting at the moment? What are your plans this weekend? Have you done anything unusual recently? How did you get started in your career? What's the strangest place you've ever visited? What has been the best part of your day so far today? What's the funniest video you've seen recently? Are you a dog person or a cat person? What's your favorite place in the world? What's your dream job? What's the most beautiful place you've ever been? If your mind were an island, what would it look like? If you could create a new flavor of ice cream, which one would you create? If you were a king or a queen, what would your throne look like? What would you do if you were invisible? If you could time travel, which time period would you visit? What is your guilty pleasure? A guilty pleasure is something that you like, but you don't want other people to know that you like it. How is success measured? What's something that really annoys you, but doesn't bother most other people? How much time do you spend on the internet? When do you usually go to sleep? What's the strangest dream you've ever had? If you had intro music, which song would it be? Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that this video helped you understand how you can start a conversation with someone in English in the future. Don't forget that if you want to have conversation practice 24-7, unlimited lessons with unlimited speaking partners, then come over to our website and join our English Everyday program, where right now we have 30 lessons every day. So 
No matter what time you join, there's a lesson and you can join and you can practice speaking. Thanks for watching. Make sure you press like, press subscribe, and leave a comment down below to let me know that you like this style of video. I will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.